Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. I just got done making Wednesday's video, so I'm making Thursdays. And I hope this video finds you well. Um, and we are in Galatians chapter 4, and I'm going to do the second half of it, finishing this chapter. So I will get right into it. So we're in chapter 4, verse 17. So we were uh, previously, it uh, had taken off from Paul rebuking the Galatian uh, Christians or the people that lived in Galatia that were Christians in that church because they were uh, Gentiles going backwards and succumbing to requirements of Jewish law, which have no effect um, for anything, you know, like for salvation. And so basically he is rebuking them and he's because they're getting caught up in them. Maybe they were telling other people they had to abide by these rules and things like that to be saved. So he's talking to them about this in this chapter. So going on in 17, it says, those false teachers are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. They are trying to shut you off from me so that you will pay attention only to them. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right. But then let them do it all the time, not just when I'm with you. So here they have ulterior motives and basically um, are trying to lure them away, possibly even, you know, for, you know, just notoriety, money, whatever. Uh, like, let's get these people away from the Apostle Paul. So he is rebuking them about this. He says, oh, my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again, and they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. I wish I were with you right now so I could change my tone, but at this distance, I don't know how else to help you. So this is a rebuking letter that is a strong letter. Um, and he's doing it out of the care, concern, and love for them. And so he's saying, uh, you know, gosh, I'm striving again for you. I'm, so, you know, basically showing the exasperation that he has with them for going backwards. And he is going to continue to feel this until Christ is fully developed in their lives. They're mature believers and they are not getting off track. They're not going by every wind of doctrine. And so that's what he's talking about. Then it, uh, the next verse is 21, and it's titled, Abraham's Two Children. Tell me, you who want to live under the law, do you know what the law actually says? The scriptures say that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife, okay? So Abraham and Sarah had taken it into their own hands to have, they didn't like, the, the wait was too long, and Sarah had told him to sleep with his slave, uh, which is Hagar, and then a child was born, but that was not the child of the promise. So that's what that's talking about. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. But the son of the freeborn through Sarah, wife, was born as God's own fulfillment of his own promise. When we try to rush God, when we try to intervene and make it happen the way we want, it's going to be a failure. So they tried to make God's plan happen, and it was a disastrous attempt. And actually, to this day, we still see the result of it. And that is through uh, Hagar's son, Ishmael, is the, you know, all the Arab um, Muslim community comes from him and it actually says in the bible there will be you know problems with each other with with jews and muslims and don't we see that because that is that attempt they're all even to this day in jerusalem you know there's a constant fight between muslims and jeru uh you know jews against you know where's the temple going to be oh our thing you know we have it here that is all the way from them taking it into their own hands. If he would not have done that, I think there would not have been any problem. So don't take it in, in your own hands. And I've done this myself with disastrous results. 
And so then going on in 24, these two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai, where people received the law that enslaved them. And now Jerusalem is just like Mount Sinai in Arabia because she and her children live in slavery to the law. But the other woman, Sarah, represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman and she is our mother. And as Isaiah said, rejoice, O childless woman, that would be Sarah, you who have never given birth, break into a joyful shout. You who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband. So she was barren uh, at old age. And then remember the angel came to them and said, you're going to have a son. Or, you know, and they were like shocked. She was laughing in the tent when they were telling them that. And it finally did occur at just the right time. But unfortunately, they had intervened and tried to force it through human attempt. And now we see, you know, what's going on with that even to this day. And then with the last two chapter, uh, paragraphs, number 28, And you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise, just like Isaac. That would be believers in Jesus Christ. But you are now being persecuted by those who want you to keep the law, just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. And that's so true. Even from birth, Hagar mocked. As soon as she became pregnant, she mocked Sarah. As soon as her child was born, she mocked Sarah. And then when uh, uh, Isaac was born... Ishmael and Isaac had problems, and it goes on till this day. So through Isaac is the spiritual inheritance because Jesus Christ came from that. And basically, if you accept Jesus Christ, then you are in that lineage. And then going on in the last paragraph, it says, But what do the scriptures say about that? Get rid of the slave and her son, for the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with her free woman's son. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman. We are children of the free woman. And that kind of go back to that time where, you know, Hagar was, you know, mocking Sarah and there was a whole bunch of problems. And so Sarah said, you know, get rid of her. I don't want her, her and her son around and he sent them off and the Lord actually saved them in the desert from dying of thirst and hunger and he made him into a great nation and we can see that the Muslim nation is a huge nation so that he did bless that and but the promise was through Isaac who was you know the, and, and anyone through Jesus Christ who has accepted him is in that lineage like I said before so we are not from the bondage of the law we are from freedom in Christ I hope that that has made that um, clear to you and thank God for that freedom in Christ I hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend Pray that my daughter's wedding goes well, that we have good weather and no one's passing out from heat stroke <laughs> and that my husband's um, foot gets better also. I appreciate all of you and your support. God bless you.